Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service this morning. And Karen's uh, coming right along here, and uh, while she's coming, everybody else will settle in, <clears throat> and uh, we'll be ready for our worship time this morning. This time, we're going to have a focus on our, our kids, our young people, and uh, we had a request last week for a children's story. We're going to be planning to do that children's story each time, too, here. We were thinking about that before, uh, but we'll be doing that, in, but today it's a kid's sermon, and uh, just for but it's for the whole family. So, we're looking forward to that. Hi, Simon. And I'm sure there's some kids there. And, uh, Yayamu is here. Good, welcome. Michael is joining us, Kevin Mathias, people from all around our district, different places, and welcome. Here's good, Karen. Good morning. Yeah. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Good to see you there now. Um, Yep, it's on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> yeah. I'm just checking, but still some things filter through in spite of that, I don't know. But, uh, welcome. Well, this is a holiday weekend, isn't it? Yes, it is. Memorial, Memorial weekend. Memorial weekend, yep. So, it's especially a family day. Family yeah. weekend, family weekend. I took a little road trip Thursday, uh, went a little early and um, went to a couple of cemeteries to put some things on uh, my folks' grave and my sister's and haven't done that for many years because we didn't live close enough. But um, so it was nice was to nice. go see them again. Yeah. Have yeah. something pretty on their graves. Yeah, that's right. And of course, my brother, who lives locally, he always um, decorates my folks, our folks's um, tombstone. Um, very nice every year. Nice. He and his wife. So I hope that all of you can have some special time with your families this weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks for including us. We're 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 happy to to be here for that too. And despite the the weather, we're going to have a lot of rain, aren't we? We'll still make it a nice weekend. Yeah, that's right. It'll be kind of wet. That's true. It's a little wet, but uh, it could be a lot worse, like we say. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. <laughs> well, we heard some good news this week that uh, for Maplewood Academy. Yeah, we did. Clinton Anderson is going to be the music teacher. That was... Isn't that great? That was really nice. I enjoyed hearing that, um, yeah. that we'll have... Um, the Andersons back in Minnesota. Yeah. Clinton and uh, his wife, Leah, they were teachers up in Bemidji for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been in various academies, and uh, now they get to come back home. Weren't they in the cities at the Day Academy there? Minnetonka? Yeah. They were there uh -huh. in Minnetonka for a while, too. And uh, they we've watched the, the kids grow up. Here in Minnesota, yeah, yeah. and they have uh, music ministries of their own, don't that's, they? Yeah, so. yeah they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's that's great. Yeah. Uh, May thirtieth is going to be a Maplewood Academy offering, so we can be thinking ahead and planning for that. Um, there's a YouTube video that uh, I uh, posted last night 
on my Facebook page and I'll post it again after we're done here. And it's a it's an excellent video, very well done. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm looking very forward to seeing yeah. that later today. And uh, so it'll you'll really enjoy it. It's okay. just a short video, about six minutes, I think. But it to uh, watch that and then go to the to the to the um, AdventistGiving.org and hmm. and donate something for Maplewood Academy, especially May thirtieth is when that is coming up. I did see a picture they posted with um, with big pictures of all the graduating students out on the lawn oh. between the gymnasium and the ad building. So uh, that was nice to yeah. see announcing the commencements. Yeah, we miss we miss having that. Yeah. And you know, there was I think most everybody in our district knows already, but we had gotten word um, right before Sabbath last week, was it? Or maybe it's been two weeks ago, I don't know. Um, that Michael Jones is leaving. Yes. I don't know if we yeah. announced that we're on gonna, here, yes. but but we're going to miss uh, we'll Michael miss and yeah. Aquarius and their mm -hmm. family yeah. as they go to Florida. Yeah. So. And our principal, John, John Bedell, Bedell yeah. and the music teacher, then is there, she's going to the same place. Right. And so, yeah. Uh, North Star Camp is another thing, uh, another cancellation. We're not going to be having right. summer camp for the kids this summer, but they are going to continue with a program there and they'll have some staff and they'll be, they'll be uh, working on the grounds and uh, working on the program for 2021. Mm. And they'll also uh, try to include some things on campus there for uh, people to come in and use the hiking trails mm, and and other things like that. So keep your eyes and ears open and, and uh, for that. And uh, families, they're going to have a something special for family camp. Mm -hmm. They're planning something special for family camp. So Ooh, we'll have to stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. And also, if you, I will uh, post after we're done here again. I did last night. If you can, you can just scroll down on my page. You'll you'll see that there's a link to a list of all the worship options. Um, mm. Ours is not just not the only worship option, but uh, there are many here in Minnesota, and there's a link to each one of them, including so ours. So you can go back and watch them later. Yeah. They aren't all... The link is there to our YouTube page, so you can go back, go there, and listen to anything there and uh, and and other people that uh, in the conference can do that as well and the other sites could well. watch something every night of the week and yeah, fill our week true. up the, you know there's that's true there's a lot of good material mm -hmm. out there we've listened to some and we, we've listened to Andrew who's out in Pennsylvania and yeah. uh, Andrew He's Christensen on early in, earlier in the morning yeah and uh, Abner at mm -hmm. uh, the edge and uh, Cambridge and, Karen Lewis. Uh, yeah. And there's some are just um, doing from their churches on, on their websites, right? So they're not as easily found. Yeah. Like so you're it's doing nice it to have Facebook. this link here for, yeah. for that for and people we, to go and see. We have some friends that are out in Ohio who used to be in Minnesota, um, Fred and Heidi Shoemaker, and she posts um, pictures of Fred in his weekly message um, frequently, and their cat is always bombing the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so this morning she posted a picture that the cat was inside looking out the window as Fred was sitting on the patio giving his morning lesson. And so uh, got a chuckle out of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. We that's don't have good. any pets anymore to to um do that. Yeah. Sweet Pea always used to come around when she heard my voice when I was singing or practicing, and she always would come around. She'd sit on the top of the chair there, or yeah, or in your guitar case. In my guitar case, yeah, we we'll yeah. miss miss her. But um, do you have Grace on our prayer list? Yes, yeah, we do. She's there. So yeah, thank you, um, Janet. Oh yes, yes. And also, um, yeah, if there are any oh, we'll, prayer requests, we uh, yeah, we'll try to notice them. As we come along but I have the list that uh, we have so far that we're working on um, 
So what's happening in Michigan? Then there, there is a 500 year event. You know, we've, we've been hearing this, these, you know, oh, the worst in a hundred years, worst in a hundred years. Well, they had the worst rain oh, in 500 years and that's the right. dam broke. Yeah, many and, people were uh, evacuated. Up, yeah, it's up, up by the, uh, if you, you know, Michigan is like a hand and it's up right up in here on the east side. Oh. Uh, of What's, Michigan, Central, East Central didn't you Michigan. Say it, what city was it near? Detroit. Up Just there? north of north and a little, mostly north, but a little west from Detroit. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And um, I just mention that because uh, I'm sure there are people that they're affected there that are connected with us somehow. Yeah. Uh, but we also mention it because of the unprecedented things that are happening. We mentioned that, that earlier this again? week, unprecedented. And here we have another, at least a 500 year event. Hmm. And all of these things, uh, you know, it's not any one thing, but they all add up to the, to pay attention. And, when, mm -hmm. and it's not saying that, that's, that uh, all of this is gonna happen tomorrow. But I think the Lord is saying, pay attention. Be ready. And that's nothing new. Remember in Matthew 25, he says, watch and pray. Well, this is the time to even more than ever to watch and pray. Uh, so the conference office is still closed. Uh, they're working from home. And um, we'll remember our conference and our prayers. Um, but they're um, working on uh, opening up. You know, we're, we're looking forward, looking ahead to opening up. Mm -hmm. um, probably not something happening right away, but, but um, it's interesting over in, in uh, Oregon, in the Oregon Conference. I had a, um, something up on my Facebook this week about... Uh, it says, in a message posted yesterday on his Facebook page, Oregon Conference President Dan Linrud said, Adventist churches would remain closed in the conference despite a stay-at-home order being struck down by a circuit judge in the state. Evidently, there's some people that think that this is a religious liberty issue and that their liberties are being restricted, and so they're working to, to get the stay-at-home order struck down. Um, and he, he is saying, well, even if it is struck down, it's not a religious liberty issue, it's a safety issue. And that's really what it is. You know, yeah. um, what, what is happening now does have a lot of overtones to the last day events, but we still have our constitution, we still, um, you know, we still have our lead liberties and freedoms, and um, there's a lot of things that aren't quite right, but we're not there yet. It's just we've never really, our generation really hasn't gone through anything like this. Yeah. You know, because since World War II, maybe, yeah. we haven't really so, been hit so hard. Um, with, but anyway, um, we don't know, <laughs> we haven't seen anything yet. So you maybe know, we should not be looking at it as a restriction of our liberties. I know if you were a you know a small business owner, you might really feel like you know I want to get back to work and I can't. And we don't and blame them. And it's a restriction. I, I can identify can with that. I can understand that. But still, uh, the laws are in place for the governors to do what they're doing. And they're completely within the law to do what they're doing, and it's a safety the issue that there, we want to cooperate enforcing. with. Yeah. yeah, as long as, as and they are not. This is not a. Uh, this is temporary, and so we're working. So. We're looking forward to being able to open up. And actually, Minnesota has begun to open up, and in in every actually every state now is is looking toward opening up. Some are thinking it's a little too soon. Time will tell, but um, but they're opening up. I have a hard time with it. I kind of vacillate back and forth, <laughs> <laughs> bouncing stuff off of him a yeah. lot. And it's like, how soon should we do sure? this? You know, because I do feel for the the people that are really really hurting. Um, you know, the the business owners. Yeah, and that's it, right. It, it's very hard. 
yeah. on them. I can I can only imagine. So. Well, there's a one on the on the bright side here. We have a seminar next week on Tuesday and Thursday that we're going to I'm going to attend. Uh, it's an online seminar, four steps to reopening churches from our Adventist risk management, which is the insurer Insurance. of our conference. Yeah. So giving pointers about how to do this in the right way. Yeah. Uh, four steps to reopening churches. So um, we'll, we'll take good notes. And when we have our board meetings, not too far along here, we'll, in our planning to reopen, we'll be considering those, those things. But it was good to have uh, many of you join us Wednesday night. Um, when we looked at Ephesians chapter 1, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places is ours in Christ Jesus. Unprecedented times call for an unprecedented proclamation of the gospel, and that's the fourth angel's message that lights up the whole world with its glory. And we have a privilege of being part of that. And uh, we'll, we'll have it, another a message uh, this uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, another time of prayer and, and a devotional uh, for, for everyone. And, and of course, it'll all be up on our YouTube channel, which is Southwest District MNSDA. And, uh, of course, here on Facebook. Uh, we want to thank you for your faithfulness and tithes and offerings. Um, April, the April figures did come finally come through, and uh, it was good news because we actually had a tithe gain of 2.9%, uh, I think it was. Hmm. And the fear was that would there would be a big drop. Well, in our com in our little district here, not so little when you when you drive it. Uh, our no. district, <laughs> in our no. district, uh, two of our churches were down a little, and two of our churches were up. So, uh, I think we we had a little bit of a drop, about eight percent. But uh, didn't you say maybe a little catch up was going on? Yeah. So, and that's true in some of the churches there were, was catch up from the month before. So we'll continue to watch that, but, but that is so good to know that, uh, that, that God's people are being faithful and are returning their tithes and offerings and even in this crisis. You can go to adventistgiving.org or mail in uh, the check to your tr local treasurer. Uh, <clears throat> Are we going to sing now? We're going to have our scripture. Oh, oh for, no, no. Yeah, yeah you're right. Kids We're going to sing some kids' songs. No, we'll have scripture. Okay. Well, Let's. I hope while he's getting his guitar ready, I hope you all have been having a, a good week and enjoying um, the spring. Uh, we've had a good week. Yes. Here. We have. So. Very nice. Crayon box. Let's sing crayon box. And kids, if you know the motions, stand up where you are and do those motions, okay? When I was a little child, no higher than your knees, my mother bought a box of crayons just for me. Well, I picked them up and I opened them up and I looked way down inside. And the colors they reminded me of Jesus when he died. Red is the color of the blood that he shed. Brown is for the crown of thorns they placed upon his head, upon his head now. Blue is for royalty in which he did dwell. Yellow is for the Christian who's afraid to tell. Well, I colored and I colored Till the crayons were all gone And they fun Well, I colored and I colored Till the crayons were all gone And though I am much older now The memory lingers on So when I see a little child With crayon box in hand I tell him what they mean to me and hope he'll understand, understand that 
Red is the color of the blood that he shed. Brown is for the crown of thorns they placed upon his head, on his head now. Blue is for royalty in which it dwell. Yellow is for the Christian who's afraid to tell, afraid to tell of the Savior who died on Calvary, who died for all the lonely sinners just like you and me. Someday he's coming back, back to be our king, and the colors of the crayon box, you will see, you will see that red is the color of the blood that he shed, brown is for the crown of thorns they placed upon his head, on his head now, blue is for royalty in which he did dwell. Yellow is for the Christian who's afraid to tell. Yellow is for the Christian who's afraid to tell. You know, he's testing my memory when he starts <laughs> singing and doesn't have the words up on the uh, iPad. Yeah. <laughs> well, soon and very soon. We know the words then. I hope so. <laughs> Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. No more crying there. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the King. No more dying. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. See, I just thought of something we saw yesterday. Yeah. Remember the little bird? He was flitting oh, around yeah. just... He Beautiful was, little bird, black and... He seemed like he was a little, a little tipsy or... or um, <laughs> he was just flitting, flitting, flitting around. Yeah, just going... Just busy, tipsy busy, or busy. Dizzy. Busy, just, busy, busy. I don't know if I've seen one of them before, yeah. but we looked him up and it was a American Red Start. Yeah. Does anybody have Red Starts um, where you're at? Yeah. They're, I've never, I've never seen one yet here in Minnesota. But a, I guess they're down in this area. He was just uh, flying in and out. Little bird, black with some orange on its tail and wings and black down its throat and then it's got a lighter colored the, breast yeah, yeah but he's uh, he's flitting around catching the bugs yeah busy so, not paying too much attention to us <laughs> no he we got he kept getting close to us but anyway that was yeah. kind of fun so okay we got some words for this one so we can oh good he's still working on me you oh, know that's the him. thing is <laughs> jesus is always working on us and uh, in fact, if he's not, we're doomed. We need to have him working on us every day. We'll and that's with his Holy Spirit. That's yeah. right, with the Holy Spirit. So help us sing this song from He's home. still working on me. He's still working on me To make me what I ought to be 
It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. There really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge him yet, there's an unfinished part. But I'll be perfect just according to his plan. Fashioned by the master's loving hand He's still working on me To make me what I ought to be It took him just a week to make the moon and stars The sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars How loving and patient he must be He's still working on me Let's do the middle part again there really ought to be a sign upon my heart Don't judge him yet, there's an unfinished part But I'll be perfect just according to his plan Fashioned by the master's loving hand Aren't you, he's still working on me To make me what I ought to be it took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. He's still working on me. He's still working on me. Yes. And whisper a prayer. Whisper a prayer in the morning. God answers prayer. And he's coming soon. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in Our scripture this morning is from Psalm 44, verses 4 to 8. Words, good words to keep in our minds as we travel along the path here on this earth, just like Pilgrim did, for we are pilgrims here on this earth. That's right. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Through you, we will push back our adversaries. Through your name, we will trample down those who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, nor will my sword save me. But you have saved us from our adversaries, and you have put to shame those who hate us. In God, we have boasted all day long, and we will give thanks to your name forever. Amen. 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 Okay. Well, be before we have our prayer, we want to ha we have a song that we'd like to sing, and uh, it's titled "I Am a Pilgrim." There is a, a version of this song in the hymnal, but this is a, a it has the same words basically, basically, but it's a little bit little bit different version of it. The version but, that to take three, but we're take two today. Yeah. <laughs> so, Take our... three, that musical okay. group, yeah. I am a pilgrim and I'm a stranger. I 
can tarry but a night. Do not detain me, for I am going to where the fountains are ever flowing. I'm a pilgrim and I'm a stranger. I can tarry but a night. shining all my longing heart is there here in this country so dark and dreary I long have wandered forlorn and weary I'm a pilgrim and I'm a stranger I can tarry but a city to which I journey, my Redeemer is its light. There is no sorrow, nor any sighing, nor any tears there, nor any dying. I'm a pilgrim and I'm a stranger. I can tarry I'm a pilgrim and I'm a stranger. I can tarry but a night. Amen. Well, happy Sabbath, everyone. We really enjoy seeing your names come up, that we have more people joining us. So. Nice to have you with us this Sabbath. Yeah, thank you for your comments. And we if we don't, if we don't see that. the comments, because uh, we're busy doing everything else here, we see some of them. But if we we miss them right after we're done, we go over them and yeah, and reply so to them. So we love to get messages from you and get some feedback. So don't be shy. <laughs> well, we want to have our morning prayer. And uh, we have uh, praises once again. We just uh, praise God uh, uh, for Elma's being being home, for mm -hmm. Sa Stephen being able to go back to work, uh, for Cheryl Don and Dale Roy to be able to go back to work. We want to continue to remember them in their work environment, their son Nathan as well, and um, the the prayer requests we have. Um, there is a new request. Uh, Grace, uh, she's going to be going into surgery soon, and uh, so let's remember her in our prayers throughout the day. Yes, remember her. Yes, and um, of course Janet's daughter-in-law Ashley continuing to work in in that, the, her environment too. Um, mm -hmm. All our all our health coworkers, uh, some are in uh, more. You know, some are in places where there is a lot more of the virus, and some aren't. But uh, they're all taking a, a risk as they yeah. work for in those places. Um, Roy and Vivian uh, are artichoke members, and uh, that Vivian will be able to to uh, recover from her hip mm -hmm. uh, surgery. And Bill Bacon and Dorothy. Uh, also, he's with recovering hip, from she's a back home again. And, surgery. Yes. And uh, we want to continue to remember Dan and Sandy Daniels with their son passing away unexpectedly. Right. Um, this is going to be a, a really difficult year ahead for them. And we want to continue to remember them in our prayers. We did send a card out to them from the Pipestone yeah. um, family. And earlier we were praying for Dale Rolag. Um, he was in a car accident and... He did pass away, so we want to we want to remember his family uh, in in our prayers. So you said he was related to one of Judy yes. Shrek's students. Judy Judy Shrek's uh, students, uh, okay. the father of his their father. Or, okay. Yeah. And I want to remember Neil Rabin's family. Yes, they I lived, was gonna. They were up that. in Mora. Neil passed away. Um, this past week, and 
We were there, Pastor, for it was about Sabbath, five years. I think. Yeah. No. Yeah. And when Aubrey was in middle school, and we lived yeah. in Hinckley, and Neil was Neil was a unique um, individual, to say the least. He <laughs> had quite a sense of humor, and everybody loved him. And yeah. he was the co-inventor of the game Twister. Yeah. So, who hasn't played <laughs> you can Twister? Imagine what kind of a Sense of humor, Sen or yeah, like personality. <laughs> it had to be a little. To, it was fun though, and yeah. so we we want to reach out to Darlene, his wife, and yeah. and their daughter Marcy lives up in the St. Cloud area, and he has a couple sons, and all their family um, keep them yeah. um, at heart um, during this time. Okay, well, let's pray. Okay, dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. We even thank you for the rain because things look so much greener after the rain and and we and the flowers are so bright and we see all the evidences of your love for us and your creation all around us. For our creator is our redeemer and um, the one the same one and the same. And so we praise you today and we thank you today as we remember that. And uh Thank you for giving a, a day that we can just spend with you and, and with our families and, and with our fellow uh, believers, remembering you as our creator and our redeemer. So we just uh, thank you for all of that. And we, we want to now come as we are worshiping together this morning. And we just uh, want to bring these special requests for you and the praises. We thank you for the wonderful way that you have answered our prayers. We just pray that you'll continue to be with those that need your continued guide, your, uh, uh, sustenance and, and lifting yes. up. We pray that you'll be with, with each one of them. Uh, think of uh, Roy and Vivian, and, and we think of, uh, Don, of uh, Bill and Dorothy and Dan and Sandy, uh, family of Dale, who passed away as a result of a car accident. It's a very difficult time for them. We pray you'll bless them. And uh, we want to especially lift up Grace this morning. You are, she is one of your uh, children. You love her very much and you're, you're, uh, you know her needs better than any of us. And we just pray that you will draw close to her Lay your healing hand upon her. Give the doctors wisdom and guidance as they uh, perform the surgery, and that it will it will go well, and that she'll continue to have have uh, improving health as she yes. moves ahead. And uh, we just uh, thank you that uh, we can lay all of these things in your in your care. We pray you'll be with Neil's family. We miss him, and and. Uh, but we thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus Amen. to see him once again soon. And uh, pray you'll, you'll be with Darlene and with her, the, their family, with Eva, and with all of their, all of their children and, and uh, the foster children that they raised. And we just pray that you'll draw close to them right now and bless them. Amen. Give them your, the, the hope that uh, they need so much and the comfort and uh, so we just thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. And we pray as we go with, uh, with Pilgrim along the pathway today that your Holy Spirit will bless us and we can, be, we can learn a little bit more about the importance of staying on the path. We thank you for your Ten Commandments, your word that's a light to our, your, a light to our path, a lamp to our feet. And we just pray you'll bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So you're going to be talking about Pilgrim today. Pilgrim. That's right. You're having a I children's... This is a, the, a special children's message. And, uh, you know, this was... Uh, I remember when my dad sat down and read the whole book, Pilgrim's Progress, to us. Hmm. When I was probably in about the second grade and uh, somewhere in there... And maybe maybe a little older, but somewhere in there, when I was uh, 
the age of a lot of our kids, my dad sat down and read that book to us, and we couldn't wait for the next chapter, and we enjoyed that. It's a wonderful story, and uh, it's allegory. It it uh, is connected with our Christian walk, and it helps us by the story to understand the pitfalls that we can come across in life and how God will help us through it and get us to that promised land. You know, I saw there was a new animated per, uh, version of that that was made last year. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to watch it last Sabbath evening, but um, we couldn't get, you have to buy it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. um, I have to do that. But it and those like are nice to good. have, though, that, that animated version and so forth. But you can't capture everything in That's the book. Right. <laughs> and uh, there's no substitute right. for the That's book. That's true. And, uh, so, Doubting Castle this morning. We'll... We'll see you in a little few mi- minutes. Okay. You'll, you'll be right with us. You're not I'll leaving. I'll be nearby. All right. <laughs> well, we are all on our way, young people, to, our, to the heavenly city. And John Bunyan was the one who wrote this story, the story of Pilgrim's Progress. He was, uh, this was... Uh, many years ago over in England when they were being persecuted about 18, I don't remember exactly. 1600s, that's right, maybe the 1600s. And um, he, he, the the established churches in England uh, didn't agree with some of his ideas and uh, rather than just letting things go the way they should have, they put him in prison. He was in prison for a lot of years, and while he was in prison, he wrote this story, this allegory, the story of Pilgrim on his way to the heavenly city. And it's about as Pilgrim's, his name was Christian. And that's all of our names, really. And it was about Christian and the things the devil put in his way as he was on his way to the heavenly city. Today we're going to look at just one part of that story, Doubting Castle, and how important it is for us to stay on the path. Christian had started out on his his journey to the heavenly city, and he had this heavy load on his back, represented all of his sins, and all of us have that load of guilt to begin with, and he was carrying that load on his back. And uh, he finally came to the place in his journey where he came to a hill with three crosses. And we know what that means. And when he looked at that center cross, all he had to do was look at that center cross and the straps that held his burden on his back snapped and the burden rolled down the hill into the open sepulcher at the bottom of the hill. And what a a relief that was for Pilgrim as he had gotten rid of that heavy burden of guilt and sin. There was a long road ahead of him on the way to the promised land. Uh, and this heavenly city. And uh, he, he was met by evangelists who gave him a key and said, here, this is a special key. And if you'll keep this key close to your bosom, it's called the key of promise. And it'll be able to open a lot of doors. Just remember that you have that there in your bosom. And then he gave him the ticket. He gave him the key and he gave him a ticket to show at the gate of the heavenly city to let him in. He got the t- as soon as he looked at the cross, that's when he got that ticket and the key. Well, he went over the hill of difficulty and he went down through the valley of humility and he even went through the valley of the shadow of death. And he met hopeful. Hopeful was also on the king's highway on his way to the heavenly city. 
and the road was rough, and their feet were sore. And uh, Pilgrim said, isn't there a better way that isn't so hard on our feet and so rough? And they looked over on the left, and they saw a meadow. And there were stairs, there was a stairway that was built that went up over the fence. And on the other side of the fence was Bypath Meadow. And Christian said, oh look, there's a meadow along our pathway. Let's go over and take a look. Not only did they go over to take a look, they went over the fence to take a look. And when they looked, they saw another path on the other side that went right along the path that they were going on. And Christian said, oh, just as I hoped, here is an easier path. It was a meadow. It had grass in it. It was smooth, easy walking, easy on their feet. And it was going right alongside the same path that they were walking on. Just as I hope, he said, here is the easier way. Let's just stay over here on this side of the fence. Well, Hopeful said, what if this path leads us in the wrong way? And Christian said, oh, that's not likely. It goes right along beside you can just see it's going right along beside the path that we're on, that we were on. So they, they, they started down the path on the other side of the fence. And it was so easy on their feet. They, it was so much easier walking. And up ahead, there was a man walking along the same path. And his name was Vain Confidence. And they called out, where does this path <clears throat> where does this path lead? And he said, uh, "Oh, it leads to the heavenly city." And Christian said, "Well, didn't I tell you? We'll be just fine. This path leads to the same place, to the heavenly city. We'll be just fine." And so they followed the man. But when night came, they they lost sight of the man walking ahead of them because he fell into a deep pit made for the, by the prince of those grounds. And they heard him fall. And they said, are you okay up there? But there was no answer. All they heard was a groaning. And Hopeful said, where are we now, Christian? But Christian was silent because he thought maybe they had gone the wrong way now. And then it began to rain and thunder and lightning. And the water began to rise. And Hopeful said, oh, I wish we had stayed on the path. And Christian said, well, who would have thought that the path would lead us down the wrong way? There was no way to know that. Hopeful said, I was afraid of this. That's why I asked you, I would have spoken plainer, but you are older than I. And Christian said, oh, I'm sorry I led you the wrong way into danger. Please forgive me. I didn't mean any harm. And Hopeful said, I forgive you, brother. I believe this will all turn out for the good. And Christian said, well, I'm glad that I have such a merciful brother. But we must not stand still. Let's try to go back. They knew they'd better not keep going down this path. They needed to go back. And so Hopeful said, you better let me go ahead of you this time. And Christian said, no, let me go first. Because if there's any danger along the way, then, then I'll be the first to meet it. And it's, besides that, it's my fault that we went the wrong way. And Hopeful said, no, because your troubled mind might lead us the wrong way again. 
I should go first. And then they seemed to hear an encouraging voice that said, Let your hearts be toward the highway, even the way from which you came, turn back again. And so they, they followed the instruction of that voice. But by this time, the waters had risen so high, the way back was very dangerous. And yet they attempted to go back. But it was dark. And the floodwaters rose so high that they were close to drowning nine or ten times. And they couldn't, as hard as they tried, they couldn't get back to the stairs that night. So they found a little shelter. And they sat down under that shelter until daybreak. And they were so tired that they went fast asleep. Well, not far from there was a castle, and that castle was named Doubting Castle. And the owner of that Doubting Castle was named Giant Despair. And they were sleeping on his grounds. And Giant Despair got up early, and he was walking around in the fields on his grounds, and he caught sight of Christian and Hopeful sleeping on his grounds. Wake up, he growled. Where are you from? What are you doing on my grounds? And Christian and Hopeful said, when they woke up and they saw, they heard this, and they said, we're just pilgrims and we've lost our way. And Giant said, you have this night trespassed and trampled by, and lying on my grounds. You must come along with me. And they were forced to go because he was stronger. And they had little to say about it. And they knew that they were at fault. And so they went along. And giant despair drove them in front. And he put them in his castle, which, was very, which had a very dark, nasty, stinking dungeon. And here they lay. Wednesday morning to Sabbath evening with not a bit of bread, not a drop to drink, and not a ray of light, and no one to ask how they were. Now, <clears throat> Christian was doubly sorry because it was his fault that they were in this mess. And Giant Despair had a wife. And the name of Giant Despair's wife was Diffidence. You might have to look that one up in the dictionary. But Diffidence means no self-confidence. She had no self-confidence. That's what her name meant. Diffidence. Giant Despair had a wife and her name was Diffidence. And so the giant was in bed with his wife and he told his wife what he had done. He had taken a couple of prisoners and cast them into his dungeon for trespassing on his grounds. And she asked her what she, they, what, he, what she thought he should do to them next. She asked him, well, she asked him who they were and where they were from and where they were going, and he told her. And then she told him, as soon as you get up in the morning, beat them without mercy. And so as soon as the giant despair gets up, he gets a dreadful crab tree club and he goes down to the dungeon. And at first yelling at them as if they were dogs, though they had not talked back even a little. And then he beat them so dreadfully that they were not able to help themselves or turn over on the floor. And then he left them there. And they spent the whole day in sighs and bitter weeping. And that night, Giant Despair talked again to his wife about his prisoners. And when she found out they were still alive, she told her husband, tell them to do away with themselves. 
And so in the morning, giant despair goes down to them and very rudely as before, seeing that they are very sore from the day before, he told them, since it's very likely that you will never come out, the only way would be to immediately do away with yourselves. Why choose life when there's so much bitterness? And they pleaded with him, please, to let them go. And he looked ugly on them and he rushed on them and he would have made an end to them right there, but he fell into one of his fits. Sometimes in sunny weather, and he would fall into a fit. And for a time, he lost the use of his hand. And so he left them as before to think about what to do. And Christian and Hopeful talked over what he had said. Should they or shouldn't they? Christian said, what shall we do? Life is so miserable. I don't know if it's best to go on or to just die. Shall we be ruled by this giant? And Hopeful said, yes, it is miserable. And death would be far more welcome than to be forever like this. But think about this. The Lord of the country that we are going to says, you shall not murder. Who knows? Maybe God who made the world would cause giant despair to die. Or he might forget to lock us in. Or he may have one of his fits. If, and if that happens again, I'm going to do my best to escape. How foolish not to have tried it before. Let's be patient, Christian. The time may come when we are released, but let's not be our own murderers. Well, those words helped Christian, and they spent the rest of the day gloomy and sad. And toward the evening... The giant goes down into the dungeon to see if they had done what he had counseled. And when he found them alive, he fell into a dreadful rage and he told them, Since you have disobeyed my counsel, now worse than ever, it will be, it'll be worse than if you had never been born. And they trembled. And Christian almost fainted. But they pulled themselves together and they talked it over whether to obey the giant. And Christian seemed for it, but Hopeful said, have you forgotten how God has been with you, Christian? How strong he made you? Apollyon couldn't crush you? Think of what you withstood in the valley of the shadow of death. Try to be patient. Let's, let's try to be patient as we can. And that night, as the giant was in bed with his wife, she asked about the prisoners, if they had taken his counsel. He said, they are sturdy scoundrels. They choose to bear all hardship than to do away with themselves. And she said, take them into the castle yard tomorrow and show them the bones and the skulls of those already done away with. Make them believe before the week is over that, that you will also tear them in pieces as you did to those before. Well, that morning, giant despair goes to them again, and he takes them into the castle yard and he shows them what his wife said. These were pilgrims as you were as you are once. They trespassed my grounds as you have. And when I saw fit, I tore them in pieces. And in ta ten days, I'm going to do the same to you. Now you get back into the dungeon, and he beat them all the way there. And they lay there all day Sabbath, as before. 
And in the evening, Giant Despair and his wife were in bed and again talked about the prisoners. I wonder why I could not bring them to an end, Giant Despair said. And his wife said, I'm afraid that they live in hope that someone is going to rescue them. Maybe they have lockpicks hidden on them and they hope to use them to escape. You don't say, my dear. I'll search them first thing in the morning, Giant Despair said. Well, Saturday night, at midnight, Christian and Hopeful began to pray. And they continued to pray until almost daybreak. And just before daylight, good Christian said, amazed, what a fool I have been to lie in this stinking dungeon when I could just as well be free. I have a key inside my pocket. It's the it's called promise. And I'm sure it will open any lock in Doubting Castle. And Hopeful said, good news, my brother. Get it out. Let's try it. And Christian pulled out the key. And they went over. And they began to try the dungeon door. And they stuck the key into the lock. Into the lock and they turned it. And the bolt went back. And the door flew open with ease. And Christian and Hopeful came out. And then they went to the outward door that leads into the castle yard. And they opened that door also. And, when, and then they went to the iron gate that had to be opened too. But the lock was terribly hard to open. And yet the key did open it too. And they threw open the gate to quickly make their escape, but the gate, as it opened, made such a creaking sound that it waked up giant despair and he got up to chase the prisoners. But just at that moment, he went into one of his fits and his arms and his limbs failed and he couldn't do a thing to prevent their escape. And they made it back to the king's highway safe. Out of giant despair's jurisdiction. And they came to the stairs, and Hopeful and Christian put up a pillar to prevent others from falling into giant despair's hands. And engraved on that pillar were the words Over this stairway is the way to Doubting Castle, which is kept by giant despair, who despises the king of the heavenly country and seeks to destroy his holy pilgrims. And many read the inscription on that pillar and escaped the danger. You and I are on that path today if we're obeying Jesus. Remember to stay on the path. But if you do find yourself on the wrong path, and you end up as a prisoner in Doubting Castle, remember, you have the promises of God just like a key in your bosom to unlock any door in Doubting Castle. Shall we sing a song? It's number 321 in the, in the hymnals if you have a hymnal to follow along with. My Jesus, I love thee. It's number 321. And Karen's going to come and join me as we sing this together. Number 321. I looked up John Bunyan again. Yeah. And he was born in 1628. Okay. And... He was believed to have written that story about 1675, just a few, not too many years later, he passed away. And he, um, he was imprisoned for preaching the gospel and um, attacking his, his, the ministers of his day and the way, um, their way of living and 
also for failing to attend the parish church. So he was in and out of prison for 12 years, the most part of 12 years. And that's when he, they, they said that that gave him time to, for thought and for writing this book. And so God used him in a great way. So John yeah, Bunyan. He was put in, in prison because he spoke out, spoke up about people that were not obeying God. And mm -hmm. that's what happens. But yeah. we don't need to be afraid to do that because God will take care of us as he did. My Jesus, I love thee. <laughs> Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine, for thee all the follies of sin I resign, my gracious sweet Redeemer, my Savior. Dear Father in heaven, forgive us where we have gone off the path. And we pray that you'll help us to stay on the path, to pay attention to those words that Hopeful and Christian wrote on that pillar, to not go over on the other side, even though it seems easier, but to stay on the path of obedience trusting in you to bring us to that heavenly city. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that will enable us to do what we, to, to do what we couldn't otherwise and to stay upon that path and to follow your word as it guides us along the way, a light to our path, a lamp to our feet. And we thank you that you are coming soon. And that all the suffering and death and all the problems in this world will be over. But one day at a time, we're trusting in you. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but today we know where we are along the path. And we know that you're holding our hand and you will see us through to the end. And so we put ourselves in your care and keeping once again and we thank you for this Sabbath day. Bless us. Be, stay close to us throughout the rest of this day, we pray, and through the week to come.
We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us. And uh, have a good rest of the week. Enjoy those spring blossoms while you can because they don't linger very, for very long. Yeah, so. our road, our house is surrounded by lilacs and we, I did some trimming yesterday and brought in some flowers and we're just mm -hmm. uh, enjoying those, those flowers. They don't last long enough. Yeah. But. So come join us seven o'clock Wednesday night and we'll have a devotional time together, some prayer and a song. God bless you. God bless you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.